Hi, this is Trey Pass. I'm going to do another reaction to a Mr. Nightmare story. This one is called Three Scary True Sneaking Out Horror Stories. So, you know, everybody's probably sneaked out one time or other. Uh, so let's see what this one's about, and I'll be right back for my reaction. Put my headphones in. Okay, here we go right now. Go. Sneaking Out Horror Stories. Story one, story two, story three. Story one. My aunt and uncle live in Fort Myers, Florida. Okay. Every winter we visit them for a weekend just to see them and escape the cold. Okay. This has been a long time tradition dating back to when they first moved there about 15 years ago. Okay. So we've been doing this almost as long as I could remember it. Okay. This happened back when I was 12. My cousin Ashley, who was a year older than me, would always be there, of course. So the two of us would hang out a lot during these visits. Okay. She was cool to hang out with and I related to her a lot, even though I was a young boy and she's a girl. Okay. She'd always be down to do the cool stuff that I'd normally do with my friends at that age. Okay. After the family dinner on the first night there, we all watched a movie together. After the movie, our parents hung out with each other in the kitchen drinking wine. Okay. They wouldn't let Ashley and I go out that late, as we were only 12 and 13. But Ashley wanted to go to a nearby canal where locals were apparently reporting having seen a 10-foot long alligator. <laughs> Basically, we both wanted to go see if we could find the gator after she convinced me. Uh. We snuck out through the back door while our parents were still in the kitchen. Mm. Stupid. On our way to the canal, we stopped at the 7-Eleven on the street so we could get some snacks on the way. <sighs> the cashier already told us to be careful out there, yeah. implying it was late for us to be out. Yes. The streets were deserted at this hour. The area of Fort Myers in which they live is on the significantly quieter side. We walked for like 10 minutes, and the closer we got to this canal she kept talking about, the swampier the sides of the road started to get. Oh. Ashley froze in front of me and looked straight ahead. She pointed ahead and said, What's that guy doing? <sighs> I saw right away what she meant. At the far end of the street, there was the silhouette of this man just standing completely still on the sidewalk. Oh. If he was walking or perhaps looking down at something in his hands, it would have been different. Yeah. But him just standing still doing nothing, apparently looking off straight ahead, it just sent shivers down both our spines. Yes. Ashley said this was the only way to get to the canal, unless we cut through people's yards or gross sewage type water. Are you fucking right? So we continued walking, but slower, more cautious now. We were half the distance from the man now, when he suddenly turned around. I don't mean he turned his head. No, he literally turned his whole body around at once without even taking a peek to see if we were coming first or anything. Jesus. We stopped. He was facing us, no doubt. There was a bit of a standoff for a few seconds before he lifted his arm and started waving at us. <laughs> it wasn't a normal, gentle wave of a hand. No, he was waving his whole arm. It soon transitioned into him making a come here motion with his arm. Uh, no, thank you. Ashley and I looked at each other, then started running away down the street, yes. back the way we came. Exactly. We got winded pretty quickly and stopped to catch our breath in front of some small yellow house. We sat on the grass of the property for a second, just gathering our thoughts. Ashley told me there are a lot of weird people that live down there, especially in the area we were just walking. Now I understood why her parents didn't want her out this yes, night alone. Yes, dumbass. We got up after a couple minutes and started walking back to her house. When we saw him again, Ugh. that guy was at the end of the street, not moving once again. He was as still as he was before. His same exaggeratedly stiff, arms flatted side posture. He was directly under a street light this time so we could see his features. Okay. He was like 40. His hair seemed to be slightly slicked back. His nose seemed to be fucked up, like it was bent to the side. He was smiling too. Ugh. He wasn't showing teeth though, it was a closed mouth smile. Ugh. He once again started waving at us. Then, I still don't know why, Ashley got up and waved back at him. Ugh. As she did this, he stopped waving and his smile disappeared. It was only a few seconds later that he erupted into a full on sprint Ugh. towards us. Ashley started screaming and running. I got up off the ground and ran as fast as I could after her. I was in pure shock. I think that's why I couldn't get a scream out. Jesus. That and it would take extra breath that I didn't have. Yep. We ran through people's yards, hopped over fences, and ran down different streets until we finally made it back to her house. Ugh. The back door was locked now, so unfortunately we had to knock on the door, exposing us. Dumbasses. Trying to avoid getting in trouble, we simply said we ran to 7-Eleven to get snacks. Ugh. While Ashley's parents were more upset than mine, mm. they let us off with just a slap on the wrist, <laughs> telling us not to go out again at that hour. Duh. That man's face lit up under that street light still terrifies me to this day, ten years later. You lucky. Story two.
My two friends and I were having a sleepover on one of the last summer nights before the new school year started. We didn't want to end it on a dull note, so we decided later that night that we would sneak out mm. and walk about a mile to our local high school. We live in a small <laughs> town in the middle of bumfuck Massachusetts, so everything is close. Around 12 a.m., both of my friends and I left the house okay. and started making our way to the high school. The way there was uneventful, just us walking down the road laughing, sometimes yelling, just being okay. typical dumb teenagers like always. We walked in the middle of the road because it was late okay. and there was hardly any traffic in general. It took about 20 minutes to make it to the high school, where all we did was lay on the turf field, look up at the stars, and talk about the summer, <laughs> as well as other stupid shit that made us laugh. We actually had such a good time that we laid there for almost an hour, so when we decided to walk back, it was close to 1 o'clock. As we made our way down the road back home, we approached a T-intersection. That's where we saw a car. We noticed the car was just sitting there at the stop sign, which was on our side of the road. We could only see the headlights because the rest of the car was blocked by a row of trees. No cars were coming either. Of course, it was one o'clock in the morning, but the car didn't move. It just sat there. My friends and I continued to approach the intersection. Suddenly, the car slowly moved further out of the intersection, turned in our direction, oh. and began driving past us. We made out the car to be an old white Mustang. As it passed, my friend yelled something uh, stupid about the car being oh. six, making fun of it. And it was funny for about 0.8 seconds uh. until the vehicle slammed on the brakes. I felt my heart go into my throat as the car peeled into a fast U-turn. <laughs> I yelled to my friends, run, and we all ran down the street. We ran onto the joining road where we first saw the car coming out of. As soon as I made it near the row of trees, I jumped into the woods. So did my friends a few yards down the road. We had about three seconds to spare before the car turned down the road. He started slow rolling down the street like he was looking for us. And when he didn't see us, he stopped. Oh. Out stepped two large men, oh. one holding a massive rod. Jeez. I muttered fuck Jesus. under my breath as I hid in the leaves. They began walking towards the tree line. I quietly covered my mouth to conceal my breathing. My heart was beating so fast mm. and hard I felt like they would hear it too. The driver, who had a big metal rod in his hand, mm. yelled threats at us into the woods. He continued looking into the woods, along with his buddy. I could feel mm. their eyes pass me over and over again. They just stood there, watching, <laughs> listening for one of us to make a sound. If he walked only a few more yards from the tree line into the woods, he would find me. Mm. His buddy said, fuck it, let's go, as he started mm. walking back to the passenger side of the car. Oh, jeez. the others out, he said. The driver took one last look into the woods and hopped into his car. The car turned around and took off back down the road mm. past the high school, leading out of town. I stayed in the woods for another couple of minutes, waiting to see if the mm. car would come back, which it didn't. I stepped out, <laughs> along with my friends, further down the road, and we all ran all the way home. We made it back <laughs> and tried to enjoy the rest of our night. We tried to <laughs> laugh about it later, but deep exactly. down, we knew how scary that was. We thought it was just another crazy experience until two days later when we found out through some local friends of ours that a white Mustang was stolen and involved uh. in a robbery from the next town over uh. the same night we were chased. I could only imagine what would have happened if those two mm. men decided See? to yep. walk further into the woods. Story three. Okay. When I was 16, okay. I had a curfew. I wasn't allowed out past 12 on the weekends. <laughs> My friend Jose was lucky enough to not have a curfew. It was a Saturday in 2013. My parents were asleep. Jose wanted to go explore some abandoned hospital across town. So I snuck out of my room very quietly and tiptoed down the stairs. I exited through the back okay. door and grabbed my bike from the shed. Then I left on my way to Jose's house. From there, I met him and we rode across town. It took about 10 minutes. I followed him the whole way until we ended up at this fenced off property. Inside of the perimeter was this tall brick building. It didn't look that old. It was once an active okay. hospital many years ago. The town just never bothered to tear it down. We parked our bikes in a big bush out of sight. Next step was hopping the fence, which was easy. The third step was finding a way into the building. We scanned the perimeter by walking around the building until we found a basement level window that was already broken open. Jose went in first. I shined my flashlight into the window for him so he could see. It looked a little scary down there, considering how uh. dark it was. Nevertheless, I wasn't going to bitch out now. It was my turn to enter while he held the light. Once we were in and both had our flashlights on, though, it was pretty well lit. 
There wasn't much in this basement level we entered okay. into. It seemed to be mostly for storage and boiler type rooms. We found a stairway upstairs, and once we went through this rusty door, we were on the main floor in this hallway that still had some of the lights on. It sounds weird, but yep. having some of the hospital lights still on just made this more eerie. Like we were a little more worried about running into someone. It's not like the whole place was lit up. There would be like one light on here and one light on down the hall, with lots of pitch black corners and dark gaps in between. There was also this loud buzzing, whistling sound that we couldn't pinpoint. It was kind of creepy. We started exploring by taking a look into each okay. little room. Okay. Most of the expensive stuff seemed to be cleared out, like the beds and equipment. The place was kind of clean for an abandoned building, though. It seemed not many people explored it. That or just previous people didn't trash it. Though there were some yep. holes in the walls, and some things thrown on the floors, as expected. There was one room with the door closed. We tried opening it, but it was locked. <coughs> Extremely weird, considering every other door was opened. Jose had a good point, though. Patient sleeping room doors aren't permitted to have locks on them, so that meant something was blocking the door. We also heard noises on the other side of the door, like very, very light thump sounds. We went into the adjacent room. There were a bunch of tiny holes in the walls. There was one hole in the wall adjacent to the next room over with a blocked door, a hole big enough to look through. I quietly got on my knees to look through it. My eyes had to adjust to the darkness, but after a second, I could see a woman in a long white dress, leaning on the far wall, seemingly looking at the door to the room. I was truly about to piss myself after seeing her. I whispered to Jose to look. He didn't believe me, but when he looked through the door, he gasped. We whispered to each other, wondering if we should get out. Jose said yes. He stood up and went to the door to the room. I got on my knees one more time to look through the hole again. As I put my eye up to the hole, the entire room was now blocked oh. because the woman had gotten on her knees oh. and was looking through the hole back at me with this huge smile on her face. I screamed so loud it definitely echoed throughout <laughs> the whole building. Jose didn't even ask why, he just ran for it with me back to the way we came in the basement. He crawled up through the window first, then me. The whole time I was trying to squeeze through the window, I was scared she was going to come up behind me and pull my legs back in. When we were both outside, we ran for our bikes and pedaled all the way back to Jose's. We didn't laugh about it at all. It genuinely was nightmare fuel. I went straight home after saying bye to him. <laughs> I didn't feel safe being anywhere but inside my house, in my bed. I don't believe in ghosts, so I don't believe that was a ghost. I believe there was actually some psychotic woman in there. But all I'm saying is if I did believe in ghosts, uh, I would 100% believe that's what I saw in that room. Okay. Okay. Now, let's see. Now, the first story, first of all, that your cousin's stupid, because she's older than you, but you're stupid for going with her, okay? There's a reason why your parents told you not to go out after the dark, and you want to go see an alligator in the dark? What the hell's wrong with you, okay? Oh, you're kids, so maybe, you know, kids want to... Kids take chances with stuff, but that's that was pure dumbness. And you and, you, and you're lucky you had to get killed. Okay, that guy could have killed you. Okay, you aren't sneaking out. Your parents would have never known. They'd have been heartbroken because you, you said you know you want to go out after dark. Come on, that's stupid. You know, 12 and 13 years old. Come on. I want to yeah. Let's go. Let's go in the dark. I want to go in a swamp and, and see an alligator. What the hell is wrong with you? people? Some people. I don't know. That's just beyond retarded okay and they're truly fortunate that the guy didn't didn't catch them and kill them okay this is truly fortunate that didn't happen okay and now the second story with the mustang oh my god they are true that's just shows you don't you don't know don't say nothing if you ought to just kept walking not say anything but your friend had to make a smart remark and could have potentially got you killed <laughs> luckily uh yeah hit well enough so they were actively looking for you, and you never know what their intentions were. Okay, could have killed you, uh, kidnapped you, whatever. You never know. That's why it's always mind your business because you don't know exactly who, especially strangers. You you never know what their intentions are, and you could have got killed. Okay, by you know, uh, making smart ass remarks. Okay, that's why you got to be careful. Okay, and then the third story. Come on, I want to go to an abandoned hospital. How many? 
Uh, come on, at night, of course, of course, naturally. No, and it wasn't no ghost, because I don't believe in ghosts, but it was probably just a homeless person inside that place. Okay, because obviously if the building is still up and it's, because they never tore it down and you have homeless people in your city, of course they're going to want, you know, they're going to live in there, especially you got lights on in that place and it's it's a shelter. So that makes sense. It's, you know, it wasn't no ghost. It was probably a homeless person, homeless woman that decided to live in there. It was probably living in there, in that hospital because it's, it's shelter. You know, it's, you know, it's a warm place to stay. Okay. I'm sure, like I said, it's a, it cleared out all the this equipment and stuff out of there, but it's still got rooms in it and it got lights and it's a place to stay. So that, I'm pretty sure that was just a homeless woman that was just sleeping in there, maybe, or maybe, and maybe that she has psychotic issues, you know, you know, and that's why she's, you know, she's living in there. So that wasn't no ghost, but still, I don't know what the, the deal is with wanting to go to abandoned places at night, okay? Okay, how about going in the daytime when it's full of light? Why, why you always want to go at night? You, you, you purposely want to get killed or something. I don't know, people, people are really weird with these stories. Okay, okay, but like I said, the uh, the first two stories, the third story, yeah, like I said, because you, you didn't really, you know, you kind of flee that danger. The first and second story, like I said, this, especially the first story, your cousin could have got you killed, okay? You could have got killed because you're not supposed to sneak out at night, okay? Your parents told you. And you did it anyway, because you could have got killed, okay? You could have got both of y'all killed and kidnapped, or, or worse than that, murdered, okay? And then the second story, like I said, your friend had to say a smart remark, and you got these guys, you know, hunting, basically hunting you, and thankfully you were able to hide out, okay? So, uh, I would say the, I'd say the first story, because that's because that guy kept showing up, okay? You saw him first, and then he showed up again, and then you saw him again. And then he start chasing. They actually start chasing after, you, after you when your cousin, his stupid cousin, waved that waved at him. I don't know why she did that. And then he actually started chasing after you. Okay. So and then the second story with the guy, you know, the guys in the cars again. You're lucky he was able to hide out. You and your friends. Oh, that could have been a disaster as well. So I'm gonna say first story, second story, then third story. Okay. Anyway, let me know what you think of this. The stories, three sneaking out stories. Horror stories, what do you think of them? I'll leave a link to Mr. Nightmare's channel in the description box so you can check it out for yourself. Also, links to my Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram. I also have a link to my other channel, Bob Using the Pins. Check that out as well. Also, I have a link to my Patreon channel. Please check that out as well. And this is Trey Pastor saying so long. Take care.